Good morning, good morning, Lake Como. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise in this place. Come on, we can do better than that. God is alive. God is in here. God is welcome in this place this morning. It's good to see each and every one of your shining faces. And to those streaming online, we want to say hello. Welcome to the lake. There is no place like this place, near this place. So we're glad that we see your face, albeit virtually, in the place. Amen, amen. Right now, we're just going to go ahead and go before God in prayer and just welcome him into this room. God, our Father, our Father which art in heaven, we do humbly come before you, God, thanking you for all that you've done for us just in alone in this past week, oh God. God, we know if we had 10,000 hands, we couldn't thank you enough. We know if we had 10,000 tongues, that we could not praise you enough. But God, we just want to stop by this morning to give you the honor, respect, and love that you are due. God, we also want to thank you for our online uh, visitors, oh Father God, and online members. God, we want to ask you to bless them individually and collectively. Oh, Father God, we come before you with praise in our hearts and worship in our hearts, oh, Father God. And we ask that our worship and our praise be a sweet savor to your nostrils. Mm -hmm. So, God, we want to say that we love you, we need you, we worship, we submit, and we surrender this all in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. 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 You all, I'm going to ask if you would stand if you're not providentially hindered. Come on, go ahead and stand. We're going to have a little victory this morning. Victory is mine. Come on, say. Victory is mine. Yeah. Victory today is mine. Yeah. I told Satan, get thee behind. Victory today is mine. Come on, say. Victory. Victory is mine. Victory. Victory. Victory, victory today is mine. I told Satan, I told Satan to get, get, get thee behind. Oh, victory today is mine. Sing it again, victory, victory is mine. I know that victory is mine. Oh, victory today.
God, praise God. Y'all sound good, y'all sound good. Let's keep on going. I need the brothers out there. We're gonna sing, come on and sing. We're gonna sing, come on and sing. Oh, because we love the Lord. Come on and say, we're gonna sing, come on and sing. We're gonna sing, come on and sing. Oh, because we love the Lord. Come on, ladies, y'all join in. Come on and say, we're going to sing. Sing praises. Sing praises. Sing praises. Sing praises. Because we love the Lord. Sing it again. Come on, we're going to sing. Sing praises. Sing praises. Sing praises. Sing praises.
would not be judged by God in this way. Let us partake of the sacrament. When you are complete, the ushers will come around and place the trash in the basket. Father, we pray for the man that's going to come before us, Heavenly Father, that he may bless us with the word that comes from you. All these things we pray in your name, and we ask it all, Heavenly Father. Amen. At this time, it is giving time. We have four ways in which to give. You can text it to 817-241-2112. You can also give on the website, lakecomococ.org. We also have the cash app, which is dollar sign Lake Como Church. There's also the blue envelopes, which you can place in the, the clear plastic uh, boxes that you see in the front and in the backs of the church. Last but not least, you can send it in to 5601 Fletcher Avenue, Fort Worth, Texas. The scripture for giving today comes from Deuteronomy 14, 22 and 23. And it reads as so, you must set aside a tithe of your crops, one tenth of all the crops you harvest each year. Bring this tithe to the designated place of worship, the place the Lord your God chooses for his name to be honored. And eat it there in his presence. This applies to your tithes of grain, new wine, olive oil, and the firstborn male of your flocks and herds. Doing this will teach you always to fear the Lord your God. Let us remember that what we have, we're blessed. Regardless of how great or how small. So whatever it is that your heart desires, give it as such, and not begrudgingly. So I know that I am thankful for my health, my strength, Lake Como, the parishioners of Lake Como, I'm just thankful, and that's from me. So with all that being said and done, uh, give accordingly. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Hello and welcome to the lake. My name is Jackie Thomas and here are today's announcements. Come on, I'm singing, but anyway. Uh, the youth department would like to thank everyone for making their first bake sale a huge success. Yes, they raised $152. So a special thank you to those who donated baked goods, those who donated cash, 
and those who purchased the goods and to all who supported us with your prayers. It went so well that another bake sale is planned for Sunday, April the 7th. <laughs> so mark your calendars for bake sale number two. Okay, there is an important meeting today for our parents and guardians. Today is the day to register for the 2024 Youth Extravaganza at Central Point and the State Youth Conference. Please meet with Sister Salee after worship for some crucial information regarding registration. Now, exciting news. Next Sunday is Resurrection Sunday. Got it kind of quick, didn't it? <laughs> and we are preparing for joyous celebration at our church. We invite you to join us for a special worship service beginning at 1030 a.m. And as we, com as we commemorate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, following the service, we're hosting an Easter egg hunt and family fun event. It's going to be a delightful time for fellowship and enjoyment for all ages. And to make this event a success, I know you're asking, we kindly ask everyone to bring dozens of stuffed eggs already, because it's a little late to get them stuffed. So you gotta stuff them yourself. And uh, your contributions will make the Easter egg hunt even more enjoyable for our children. As we celebrate together, light refreshments will be provided, adding to the festive atmosphere. Bless you. Alrighty. Uh, get ready to experience the power of East Point Church of Christ, their unashamed revival. It begins today and continues Monday through Wednesday. They will be nourishing the body and soul as they start feeding at 6 p.m. and the revival starts at 7. Dr. Orpheus Haywood from Atlanta, Georgia will be their guest evangelist. And then Central Point Church of Christ will be presenting the seven last sayings of Christ on Friday, March 29th at 6 p.m. Our very own Pastor Jarvis Davis is one of the esteemed guest speakers and will be sharing his insights and wisdom on this significant topic. So everyone is invited. That's this coming Friday. All right. So um, if you are a new or a potential member, mark your calendars for the new members orientation on Sunday, April the 14th, immediately following the church service. Join us as we welcome and integrate new members into our church family. And I was handed one last announcement. Uh, the Como community is gonna have their Easter egg hunt. It's gonna be Saturday, March the 30th, from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. It's a free event. Vendors, food, music, and more. And it's at the Como Community Center uh, on Horn Street. So that's all for today's announcements. If you haven't already filled out your Connect card, let us know you're here. And if you have any praise reports or, or you, any prayer requests, and put them in the back of the, the bins back there. Or you can do, fill it out online. You can text Connect to 817. 482-9363. So that's all for today. Let's get back to praising the Lord.
sin and sing that again. I really love you, Lord. I really love, really love.
that's why I, I somebody say I love, love him. Oh, 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 I, I, I really love, really love. I'm going to sing that again. I want everybody to sing it with us. You don't know, you don't know, you don't know what he's done. Can we sing that again? anybody's testimony this morning is that anybody's testimony this morning yeah. come on come on let's go ahead and give God a hand clap of praise hallelujah 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 for this next song we're going to stand to our feet we love them but we all love them because we're trying to get to somewhere so let's stand to our feet before we have the man of God come before us we love them because we know something that the world may not know that heaven is on the other side amen Come on, brothers, I'm gonna need y'all to press in from your bellies. Hey, been on the other side, say, been on the other side, hey, been on the other. Come on, you can clap, it's all right, yeah. Been on the other side, I will make it, I will make it. We need a little help out there. Soprano, say, hey, say, heaven's on the other side. Hey, here we go, Heaven's on the other side. Heaven's on the other side. Oh, heaven's on the other side. Oh, heaven is on the other side. Oh, heaven is on the other side. Right here, say, heaven's on the other side. Change it up. Say that I won't have to cry no more. I won't have to cry no more because heaven's on me. Oh, anybody believe that I, I, I won't have to cry? No, 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 Zone 
is is on the other side. Oh, one day I'm gonna get there. Say that heaven's on me. Is is it 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 your hands if you're glad to be in the house of God one more time. Come on, I said clap your hands if you're glad. Happy about being in the house of God one more time. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. God has been good to us and we certainly thank him and praise him for all the many blessings he has bestowed upon us. Certainly things that we absolutely did not deserve. Amen. Things that we absolutely did not deserve, like waking us up this morning and giving us uh, all the activity of our limbs and keeping us in our right mind. All things that we sometimes take for granted, but we know uh, that God is just that good. God is just that gracious. He's so gracious and so loving that he does for us in spite of us. And we thank him for being such a good, good, good father. Good morning to you, Lake Como. It's good to see your faces. I'm so glad that God blessed all of you uh, to make it here this morning. And then for those of you who are watching on, online, God, we thank God for your presence as well. God has been good to us. Listen, before we get into the preach word, I just want to reiterate uh, next Sunday, uh, which is Easter, which is Resurrection Sunday. Uh, we thank God for all that he did for us when he went to the cross and died that cruel death that we should have died. Uh, but then he rose early one Sunday morning uh, with all power in his hand. And we want to gather together, which we do every Sunday. Uh, but we know we put a little extra emphasis on it uh, on a resurrection Sunday. And so we want to do that. And I encourage you uh, to invite as many people as you can. Invite as many people as you can, friends, family members, coworkers, uh, those uh, that you know who, even those you know who may uh, be far away from God and need a connection with him, I encourage you to invite them on next Sunday uh, to celebrate with us uh, all that God has done for us through his son and our savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And then uh, on this coming Wednesday, uh, we will not have learning at the lake. Uh, we will be gathered there uh, with the East Point Church. And so I want you to make your way out. Uh, I'm going to try to be there every night. I'm not asking you to do that, but certainly on Wednesday night, if you're able to make it, please, let's go fellowship uh, with our sister congregation and with our friend uh, and our brother, their pastor, Dr. Dardar, as they are in revival to, to hear a wonderful word uh, from the Lord through uh, Dr. Orpheus Hayward, who is the pastor there at Renaissance Church in Atlanta, Georgia. Let's, uh, let's go celebrate and have church with them. Amen. Amen. Uh, if we're going to have friends, we got to show ourselves friendly. That's right. Amen. And so we definitely want to do that as we strive uh, to connect with uh, not just uh, the East Point Church, but every church uh, in the Fort Worth area who shares uh, like faith. Amen. It's preaching time, brothers and sisters. I want you to join me uh, in the book of Genesis at chapter number 22. Book of Genesis at chapter number 22. I want to back up to verse number one of Genesis chapter 22. Genesis 22, when you're there, I want you to signify by saying, I've got it. Verse number one says, after these things, God tested Abraham. That's enough. You may have your seats. 
after these things, God tested Abraham. For the time that is ours to share in the scripture this morning, brothers and sisters, I want to talk from this thought, the faith exam. The faith exam. Brothers and sisters, God does what all good educators do. He spends a period of time giving us principles that will be useful to us at some point down the road. And he does this through life experiences, most of which are unpleasant because life lessons seem to stick when they are presented during our down times. These experiences usually place us in a state of doubt or confusion, which eventually gives way to the realization that the only certainty in our lives is God himself and the word that he has given to us. In other words, God uses our dilemmas as his teaching aid to show us how to lean, depend on, and trust him no matter what. This is how God's curriculum functions. As you walk with him, he shows you how to have faith in him. And when a season of teaching is over, like any good educator, God will orchestrate an assessment, a test to discover whether or not the deposits he's made into you during class sessions were made in vain. This is where Abraham finds himself at the time of this text. Up until this moment, Abraham's life has been marked by faith. Ten chapters earlier, Genesis 12, God called Abraham to leave his father's house in his hometown and travel to a land that God would show him. The Bible says that he did as God said at age 75. He struck out on his journey, taking his family along with him, not knowing where God was taking him. That was an act of faith. In Genesis 15, he made his covenant with Abraham. God made his covenant with Abraham. He told Abraham in a vision that his offspring would be innumerable and they would take possession of Canaan, even though Abraham had no biological children and his wife Sarah was unable to conceive. But the Bible says that Abraham believed the Lord and it was credited to him as righteousness that took some faith then in genesis 21 hallelujah god makes good on his promise of conception to abraham and sarah but then god shows up in genesis 22 and says hey abraham i need your son back it would seem that the season of learning to have faith is over abraham was for all intents and purposes at the end of a spiritual semester in his life if you will and it was time for God to administer his exam his test to prove that his faith was truly steadfast in God this perhaps is where some of you are today you can perhaps sense God telling you to do something you never thought he would tell you to do. Listen, friends, if that's you, you should consider that this just may be your season of testing. But please know that you are in good company because every child of God has to experience a test of faith. And my goal today is to help you put your test in proper perspective. I want you to leave here with the understanding that tests such as the one Abraham went through here are not presented by God as obstacles to deter you or to cause you to stumble, but rather these tests 
are opportunities to allow the faith he's put in you to start working for you. And in turn, make it even stronger because faith that has not been tested is faith that cannot be trusted. Faith that is that is not tested cannot be trusted. The test is the instrument God uses that forces you to practice your faith because your connection to God is only as strong as your trust in God. And so I want us to take a walk through Abraham's, Abraham's faith examination in this text and make a few stops. I believe there are some things we can pull from it that will help us with our own tests of faith. God calls out to Abraham verse number one and Abraham says here I am he, he was standing ready to hear from God and verse two God says I need you to take your son your only son Isaac whom you love go to Moriah and sacrifice him I want you to see that, that, that it would seem that Abraham's faith in God to do what God said he would do years prior had paid off and after his 100th birthday, Sarah gave birth to a bouncing baby boy whom they called Isaac. Several years have gone by now. Isaac is of age now. Many scholars believe he was around age 33. Sarah didn't even think conception was possible I know this because Genesis 18 tells us that she laughed to herself when she heard it said that she would have a son but a year after that she found that she was with child and she was able to nurture the son of her own loins and watch him grow into a respectable young man and I can see Abraham as a proud father spending quality time with his son Isaac from boyhood praying with him raising him to revere and respect God and making sure Isaac knew that God was going to use him for this glorious purpose that was placed on his life in redeeming the world. God waited years before giving Abraham this test. He waited for Abraham to become emotionally attached to Isaac. Keep in mind that Abraham didn't ask for Isaac. God just showed up in Genesis 15 and said, I'm giving you an heir. Parents get attached to their children. Especially when the parents believed that they could not have any children. God's request of Abraham seems cruel and unusual because he allowed their father son bond to strengthen and out of nowhere tells Abraham to sacrifice Isaac the son that he loved and here's the first thing I want to tell you your faith is not where it should be if God can't get you to give up what you think you can't live without it's not where it should be if God can't get you to give up what you think you can't live without as a matter of fact brothers and sisters that is exactly what it means to sacrifice sacrifice occurs when you give away that which your heart has been tied to if your heartstrings are not attached God will not require it because it does not take any faith for you to give it it's, it's cheap to you. It means nothing to you. So here's the question that I want all of us to answer this morning. What is your Isaac? What is the thing that you did not ask for, thought you would never have, but God gave that you now cannot imagine life without? Only you can answer that. But whatever it is, you should know that it fits God's criteria for sacrifice 
And when he's ready to test you, he'll see if you're willing to give it up because he wants to know whether your faith is in the promise or is it in the one who made the promise. This is where some of us have failed. God, out of his grace, has given us things we thought we'd never have, that we do not deserve. And after a while, we instead, uh, after a while, instead of the foothold of our faith being the giver, it becomes the gift. And God says, I've got to challenge you to see where your trust is really invested. But it's clear from this passage that Abraham's faith was in fact in God. The text says he got up the very next morning, early the very next morning and saddled his donkey and traveled to Moriah, although God didn't tell him which mountain because listen, faith reacts without all the details. I say it again, faith moves without all the details. He didn't know where, where he was going. He, of course, takes Isaac with him along with two of his servants. They travel for three days, and on that third day, Abraham looks up and sees the mountain on which God wants him to perform this sacrifice. And verse, verse 5 reads that Abraham said to his young men, his servants, stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there to worship. Then we will come back to you. Abraham tells his two servants where they're going without revealing to his two servants what they're actually there for. Uh, he has them come along for the journey without a word concerning the true nature of of his task, they travel with their master and his son for three days. And when they finally get to where they're supposed to be, Abraham says to them, stay here, don't move. We will go the rest of the way and we will meet you back here when we're done. Now, I would imagine that these are two decent, upstanding men. Certainly, Abraham would have brought two of his best servants to accompany him for such an assignment and such a task as this. They must have been worthy enough to continue on up the mountain with them, but Abraham tells them to stay. Now, this is not suggested in the text, but I, I wonder, I wonder, if Abraham chose to tell them to stay for fear of their interference. Because surely they would have thought he was insane for doing what he was about to do. Uh, if his servants had gone up the mountain with him and discovered the real reason for the journey. They most likely would have tried to convince Abraham not to go through with the sacrifice and would have written him off as insane for wanting to go through with his own son's death. That says to us, brothers and sisters, that there will perhaps be times during your test of faith where good, loyal people will have to be told to stay behind. Because what God is calling you to, they won't be able to handle it. Because they cannot handle it, they will try to convince you that God didn't say it. Did God really tell you to sacrifice your own son? Man, that's crazy. Did God tell you to move to that city? The cost of living is too high. Did God really tell you to write about that subject? I don't know if people are ready for that. Listen, they are not bad 
people. They're loyal people. They really want what's best for you, but they just don't have the faith that you have. Listen, friends, walking by faith contradicts logic. I'll say it again. Walking by faith contradicts logic. It won't make sense to them and even with good intentions, they will fight against your obedience to God. And you have to get to a place where you can tell them, listen, I love you, but I love God more. And if my faith test makes you uncomfortable, you've got to stay behind and let me go. Understand, brothers and sisters, that Abraham left them, but he came back, which means that you may not have to cut people off for life, but you very well may have to leave them behind for a season. Because if you allow them to go up this mountain with you, there's a chance that what God called you to do will never get done because you will let them talk you out of it and keep you from completing your assignment. But a faith test requires you to be bold and mature enough to tell them I need you to stay right here until God does what he's trying to do with me in me and through me he tells them to stay put tells his servants to stay put he tells them listen that he and Isaac are going to worship. This man was commanded to take the life of the son he thought he would never have. And the author called this a test, but Abraham calls it worship. thought he would never have the son. God required the son he'd never have of him to sacrifice his life. The author calls it a test. Abraham calls it worship. In this verse, as a matter of fact, is the first time we see the word worship used in scripture. In its original Hebrew context, it means to bow down. This is Abraham's acknowledgement that his will must submit or bow down to the will of God. Abraham's disposition in this moment challenges our modern day American westernized theological views concerning worship because we make the grave mistake of confining worship to a public gathering in a building for two hours a week. I love the worship experience of the local church but worship from Abraham's perspective goes beyond that. He refers to this unconventional and agonizing quest to prove his faith in God as worship. This says to us brothers and sisters that authentic worship is not only found on Sunday morning in your joyful singing and shouting praise to God. Sometimes your most authentic worship is found on a random Thursday when your spirit is struggling because your obedience to God is causing you pain. And you know that you have matured in your faith when you understand that sometimes your sacrifice is your worship. And even when it hurts to give it, you will give it over to God, whatever he tells you to give, and you will tell him, not my will, 
but your will be done. Sometimes worship means giving to God what hurts you so, so that he can make certain that what you really want is a relationship with him. He says to his servants, the boy and I are going to worship. And we will come back to you. I'm still in verse 5. The boy and I are going to worship. And we will come back to you. One more time. The boy and I are going to worship. And we will come back to you. Wait a minute. The whole reason that they're out here preparing to go up this mountain to begin with is so that Abraham can sacrifice Isaac. Sacrifice as in take Isaac's life. Yet Abraham says to his servants with this calm and steady assurance that he is coming back down the mountain and Isaac will be with him. Understand, brothers and sisters, that Abraham's declaration is not according to knowledge. Abraham has no idea about whether or not Isaac will return with him, which means Abraham's claim was based solely on his radical faith in God. Abraham's, Abraham's mood in this moment is best explained in Hebrews chapter number 11. If you're not familiar with Hebrews chapter number 11, Hebrews chapter number 11 is all about living by faith. It begins with the definition of faith in, in verse number one. King James says it this way. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Then the Hebrew writer expands on this idea in the following verses by identifying the heroes of the faith found in the Old Testament, one of which, the father of which is Abraham. In verses 17 through 19 of Hebrews 11, that directly reference Abraham's story in Genesis 22. It says, by faith, Abraham, when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. He who had embraced the promises was about to sacrifice his one and only son, even though God had said to him, it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. Abraham reasoned that God could even raise the dead. And so in a matter of speaking, he did receive Isaac back from death. It's much clearer now why and how Abraham could make such a bold claim in Genesis 22. The reason he could say with assurance that Isaac was coming back with him is because he remembered God's promise. God promised him that Isaac would be the one to carry on the covenant to fulfill God's plan on the earth. And I believe that Abraham had a firm understanding of something very significant. Abraham understood that although people can die, promises can't. 
Abraham had no frame of reference for, at all for bodily resurrection. He had never seen in his life anyone dead be raised back to life. But he had so much faith in God. He had so much faith in God and what God promised him that he believed that the person carrying the promise, if he died, would be resurrected. And so Abraham moved with every intention to complete the sacrifice and kill Isaac, believing that God would bring Isaac back. Why? Because God's promise had not been fulfilled yet. And I want to serve notice to those of you who have had things to die and tell you that God has all the power in the world to bring it back. I don't know what your Isaac is. I don't know what promise God made to you. But if there is some divine purpose attached to it, and if there is a promise in it, God God can bring it back. He can bring it back. And, 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 and this narrative, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. This narrative has what interpreters of the Bible call types and symbols. Um, types and symbols, meaning there are Old Testament figures that portray or foreshadow New Testament figures. Because we are the New Testament church, we need to see every passage in the Old Testament through the lenses of the New Testament. Even though Abraham fully intended to perform the sacrifice, the text says God stopped him. God halted his hand as it was raised to slay his son. Why? Because Isaac couldn't die. Isaac couldn't die because Abraham's only begotten son had to keep living to make way for another only begotten son who had to die. Say it again. <laughs> Abraham was fully persuaded, ready to do what God told him to do. His hand was raised, knife in his hand to slay Isaac. God stopped Abraham because Isaac couldn't die. Because Abraham's only begotten son had to keep living to make way for another only begotten son who would have to die. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life so in Genesis 22 Isaac serves as a type of Christ Isaac serves as a, as a type of, of, of Christ how do you know uh, pastor I know because they were both conceived miraculously Isaac was born of a barren mother. Jesus was born of a virgin mother. I know because they were both sons of promise. Isaac was Abraham's promised heir. Jesus was the promised Messiah. I know because the mountain that Isaac was about to be sacrificed on in Genesis 22 is the very hill that Jesus died on in the Gospels. I know because Abraham laid the wood on Isaac to carry, but Jesus had to carry the cross. I know because Isaac was offered by his father Abraham but Jesus was offered by God the Father. I know because Isaac never resisted being bound and laid on the altar, but Jesus never resisted the nails. I'm telling you that Abraham's only begotten son was a picture of God's only begotten son, but God couldn't let Isaac do what Jesus was destined to do. 
He couldn't let him, he couldn't let Isaac do what Jesus was destined to do. Here's why. Because Isaac was born into sin. But 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 21, Paul says, God made him who had no sin. I'm about to get happy this morning. Who become sin for us that so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. And so Genesis 22 is not just a lesson about faith, but it is a portrait of prophet prophecy. Because in verse 8, Abraham was prophesying and he didn't even know it when he said, God will provide. Yes, Lord, a lamb for himself, a lamb for the sacrifice. And if Abraham was here right now, I'd tell him, man, you don't even know how right you were. Because on that same hill where you were supposed to kill Isaac is where God slayed our Isaac for us. The same hill where you provided the ram is the same hill where he provided the, ram, the lamb. And can I tell you that I know how I know you passed your faith exam. I know that you pass your faith exam when God moves you from God will provide to God has provided. Tell somebody God will provide. God, God will provide. I want you to say that until it gets settled in your spirit. Whatever it is that you need, God will provide. That's why in verse number 8, Abraham made a declaration of provision. But in verse 13, God sent the manifestation of provision. Because the God we serve is in the business of making ways out of no way. It reminds me of that song written by Thomas Dorsey. It says, like a ship that's tossed and driven, battered by an angry sea. When, when the storms of life are raging and their fury falls on me, I wonder what I have done that makes his race so hard to run. Then I say to my soul, take courage because the Lord will make a way. Tell somebody he'll make a way here. He'll, he'll open doors that no man can shut here. He'll, he'll come free you when your back is against the wall. We, we serve a God that can make ways out of nowhere. That's what he did when he when he sent Jesus to die for us. He he made a way out of no way. We were lost and on our way to a devil's hell, but he sent Jesus to put that crown of thorns on his head and put those nails in his hand and put those nails in his feet. And because he hung blood and died, we now got a way back to the Father. Because God will provide. Tell somebody God will. Tell somebody God will. Tell somebody God will. Tell somebody God will. God will provide. He 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 will provide. Because he provided. Abraham named that place. <laughs> he named that place. God will provide. Listen, if you're here today and your faith is being tested, if you're here today and you're, God has you in the examination room. He has you there because he simply wants to know that you trust him. He simply wants to know that you believe him against all odds. You either trust him to be sovereign or you don't. You either trust that he'll do what he said he's going to do or you don't. 
God will use situations like these as opportunities for us to operate in the faith that he's given all of us. Do you trust him? That's the question. Do you believe? Do you have faith? It doesn't have to be great, grand, gargantuan faith. Jesus said, faith the size of a mustard seed has the ability to move mountains. Just trust him a little bit. Whatever the situation might be, just trust him. If you trust and never doubt, he will surely bring you out. And even if he doesn't, if you're grounded enough in him in faith, he'll give you peace in the middle of the situation that surpasses all understanding. God will provide, and he provided for us a sacrifice in the place of Isaac. Our Isaac is Jesus Christ. God sent him to live us in this life. He did that. God sent him to keep the laws that we could not keep. He did that. God sent him to pay the penalty for the sins that we committed. Jesus did that. And because he shedded his blood, those who put our faith in his finished work on the cross, baptized in water, repenting of our sins and confessing him to be Lord. We are saved because God provided for us the lamb. And if you need salvation, you can have that today. If you just believe that, believe that he is the one and only son of God the Father in heaven. Believe that he came, that he lived, that he died for your sins free you from the penalty of sin and the sting of death. Live faithfully until you die and he'll come back for you. When he comes back for you, you'll live forever with him in glory. Again, if you're here today and you need your faith strengthened, you can feel your faith being tested. We want to pray with you and for you that God will continue to strengthen you for the test. Strengthen you for the journey. So that at the end of the test, your faith will be stronger than it has ever been. And so that when the next situation comes, you can tell yourself, we've been here before. And if he held me up last time, he'll hold me up in this. Listen, let's, let's stand. And I want to tell you. That if you sense yourself falling in that category, and also if you need a church home, if you're here today, I want you to know that this is a good place for you to put down roots. As the pastor of this church, on behalf of our leaders and our members, I want to tell you that this is a good place. All we want to do is seek God and serve his people, and if that's what you want to do, we want you here with us to become a part of this family, to become a part of the church at the lake where we want to do the will of God and do our part to expand his kingdom. We're going to sing now. And if you fall in either of those categories, please come, please come, please, please come now. Let's sing. Lord, I want to say thank you. God bless you as you come. Lord, I want to say thank you. God bless you as you come.
day that was not promised. For the day that you gave us so that we will rejoice and be glad in it. Knowing, your Lord, that the calamities of life will come. And when those calamities come, we do as your servant has told us this morning. To abide in you. And you will provide. So now, your Lord, knowing your will to be done through it all, it's our prayer that you always be the focus of our lives. everything you need to get it done. And so I want to encourage, encourage you with that on this week uh, that you might display the kind of faith uh, that is becoming of a Christian, provide an example to those who may not know Jesus Christ in the pardon of their sin, and that you might have an opportunity and open your eyes to opportunities uh, to evangelize and to give God, give to them those words that will help them bring them in connection and closer to God. Amen. Amen. Lift your hand. Let me pray for you. God, thank you so much for this worship experience. This time that was consecrated and set aside for your worship and your praise. God, thank you for the gift of faith. We understand that we need you in order to believe in you. So thank you for giving us gifting us with the gift of faith and now that we have the gift of faith we ask you to help us abide in that faith to help us live each and every day in the faith that you are a good father with the faith to know that you always have our best interests at heart with the faith to know that whatever you bring us to and bring us through you are with us you're standing by our side each and every step of the way increase our faith and that is our prayer and help us to be like Abraham who moves at your word with the faith to know that you will provide you will supply everything we need if we are obeying your word now, God, I ask that you be with us as we leave this place, never from your presence. God, open our eyes to any opportunities uh, to evangelize and to uh, disciple those who may not know your son, Jesus Christ, and the free pardon of their sins. Help us to do our jobs as Christians to fulfill your great commission so that your kingdom might grow in this earth. Bless us as we leave this place and head back to our homes. We ask that you bless us to find everything there just as we left it. Thank you for the Lake Como Church. Thank you for everything that you have done in this place. Everything that you're currently doing in this place and everything that you're going to do through us in this community for your kingdom and for your glory. God, we love you. We know there's nothing that we can do without you. It's the, in the matchless name of your son, Jesus, we pray that every heart shout amen, amen and amen. We love you. See you on Wednesday night. God bless you.